That's uh, a problem uh, that uh, is now off the scale. Some of our um, economic experts uh, refer to this year's uh, property tax Armageddon. Um, but juxtaposed against uh, these uh, dire circumstances, let me give you a few other uh, facts. Uh, many of you probably know that New Jersey uh, is uh, the most educated state in the country. Our citizens uh, uh, are rated number one in the country for education. Um, we also uh, have a little known fact that we're the state with the lowest suicide rate in the country. And to my mind, that means that we have gumption. Uh, so with all these brains and all these gumption, this gumption, why is it that uh, we face this uh, terrible economic problem and lead the country in property tax? Um, I think the, the reason is simple, that, that uh, in addition to the brains and the gumption, we need a third ingredient, and that is uh, the knowledge and, and uh, tools uh, to operate our government effectively and use our brains and gumption. And that's why um, uh, this past summer, the Citizens Campaign uh, launched uh, uh, the Jersey Call to Service. Um, this is a new campaign to inspire and empower uh, 5,000 citizens to participate in the leadership of their communities and to reverse the uh, tide of government waste and corruption. Um, the, uh, today, we're here to focus on uh, a set of tools that have been developed uh, by a component of the uh, Citizens Campaign, our Law and Policy Task Force, um, to address this property tax problem. Um, it affects everyone's life in New Jersey, and so therefore all citizens should be a part of the solution. And we can't expect that Trenton alone is going to be the solution here because many of the problems exist at the local level and most of the tax dollars uh, in New Jersey are spent at the local level. We've had great success uh, with citizen leaders uh, who have been um, inspired by uh, the Jersey Call to Service um, passing uh, pay-to-play reforms, government contracting laws that uh, have lowered the cost of government by creating uh, cost effectiveness uh, in our government contracting process. And we intend to follow the same strategy uh, with respect to these uh, uh, cost-cutting measures to uh, address local property tax problems. And, and to be clear, that strategy has three components. Uh, first, there's a no-blame approach. Uh, we're not coming into our local town halls and school boards and county governments wagging our fingers and blaming because that leads uh, to nothing but acrimony. Um, we're coming in with constructive proposals. Uh, the second uh, component of the strategy is that we'll have ready for adoption um, model uh, laws and resolutions. Um, it's, it's one thing to say we have a problem, it's another to even point out that there is a solution. But if we have uh, a resolution or an ordinance that's been developed by top flight government attorneys, uh, that's been tested and that works elsewhere, then we have a solution that's ready for adoption. And finally, the domino effect. Uh, as we saw with the uh, uh, government contracting reforms, if you pass them in one town, the next town gets the news and a domino effect occurs. We've done this successfully in hundreds of towns uh, across the state. I want to uh, point out as well that our goal with respect to these cost-cutting measures is not simply to reduce the cost of government. They, they, they do embrace uh, and embody very uh, significant cost-cutting measures uh, taken together uh, is probably over a million dollars a year in savings on an annual basis, repeatedly, uh, just from the first uh, round that we'll unveil today. Um, but the real goal here is to create a culture of savings, uh, to bring frugality to the forefront uh, in local government at the town, school board, and county government. So. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to uh, um, uh, look uh, with, at with you the, uh, the ten cost-cutting uh, measures. The first um, is a cost-cutting measure uh, to uh, have a municipality uh, become part of or form a regional uh, dispatch service. Uh, now, uh, dispatch services are, of course, the services that apply uh, to police and fire calls and 9-11 calls. Uh, as well as emergency uh, service calls, EMS calls. Um, we looked across the state and found one particular town that was interesting, um, Montgomery Township, where they uh, took their local dispatch services and regionalized within a county uh, with high professionalism at the county level doing the dispatch work. And they're saving in the first year uh, between six and seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. The projection by the administrator there is a million dollars a year in savings. Uh, just from regionalizing these dispatch services. And for towns that are not uh, 
uh, interested in regionalizing, at least um, there is the consideration of moving from uh, uniform dispatchers to civilian dispatchers. It's usually half the price. The second uh, cost-cutting measure is to eliminate benefits for part-time elected officials and appointed officials. Um, in many municipalities that are part of the state system, they are already um, um, uh, following this advice, but still at least uh, something in the vicinity of half of the municipalities in the state provide benefits uh, for part-time elected and appointed officials. Uh, this is a, a, a significant opportunity for savings. The benefits run from twelve to twenty thousand dollars per elected or appointed official. If you just multiply that times a mayor and a council of six council people and a mayor an average size, you're looking at close to hundred thousand dollars a year in savings right there. Another uh, cost-cutting measure is um, to uh, make a partnership between the municipal government and the school board to administer uh, the uh, IT services, the, uh, the computer administration. Um, uh, projected savings are sixty to seventy thousand dollars a year for an average municipality, and in, in doing that, just a little bit of cooperation can save on the cost of uh, network administration. Um, energy audits. Now, this is a, a one that's uh, right for the times. Uh, the federal government and state government are providing uh, significant uh, grant dollars for towns to do energy audits, and if they implement them, um, they uh, es essentially can do it virtually for free. Um, Montclair uh, Municipal uh, uh, Government was saving uh, close to $100,000 a year. New Brunswick um, it was quite uh, innovative, and they uh, did a, a joint uh, agreement between the uh, uh, municipal government, the school board, the parking authority, and the housing authority to do one consolidated audit, uh, lowering the cost of the audit and making uh, an opportunity for great savings. In that case, a private company will come in and do all of the improvements, and, and, and New Brunswick experiences nothing but savings. Um, I guess a, a fifth item here is what we call salary sunshine online, and I'm going to let uh, Tom Byrne, uh, our next speaker, um, address that because this is his baby. Um, but uh, it is an opportunity for bringing our salaries uh, in line with uh, those of uh, other states um, and to, uh, again, uh, bring fr frugality to the forefront. Um, Sometimes we say, well, we have too much bureaucracy. Um, uh, the sixth cost-cutting measure addresses that fact. And municipal governments uh, nowadays, land use is administered by a zoning board, a planning board, and often a redevelopment authority. The state municipal land use law permits municipalities of 15,000 or less to merge their zoning board and planning board. That means instead of two land use attorneys and two engineers and two planners, there's one. There's less uh, cost for administration of the board services, etc. In the area of redevelopment, uh, the state laws permit redevelopment to be administered by the mayor and council and the planning board. The planning board has the expertise to design redevelopment areas. The mayor and council has the expertise and, and the uh, pinnacle of transparency, if you will, from which to exercise their contracting authority. Uh, but uh, for whatever reasons, our state uh, uh, has uh, encourage redevelopment, and many municipalities have uh, created their own redevelopment authorities, um, often out of the public eye, much uh, harder to follow in terms of transparency, and uh, you saw the results uh, in the indictments uh, that, that came out uh, not long ago, uh, most of them involving redevelopment projects. Um, county and uh, uh, do, county uh, uh, effecting of road uh, improvements is another improve, improvement that we're suggesting uh, for cost cutting. Um, right now, municipalities, uh, of course, um, repave their own roads, uh, re repair and, and install their own curbs and sidewalks. In some instances, and the, the, none of these will apply to every municipality, but in some instances, it makes sense to have the county road department perform <coughs> these services. Why? Because the um, municipality has to pay an engineer to draw up uh, the contract for the uh, construction of the road or curb or sidewalk, uh, has to hire an engineer to draw up the specifications for this, and then once the uh, contract is bid, has to hire a construction manager to oversee the contractor who's putting in the curb, the sidewalk, or the road. The price is almost double the price. The county road department can perform the same services without any of the public bidding costs for the engineer, the attorney, uh, or the construction manager. Uh, thus, uh, a recognition of an opportunity for savings. They're doing this now in Somerset County uh, effectively. 
<coughs> and vehicle maintenance. Uh, again, we go back to Montgomery. They, they've, got, they've got some uh, smart, they have a smart administrator there who's really uh, heading the way with a real uh, good mayor as well. Um, they uh, contracted uh, for vehicle maintenance. Many municipalities, the vehicle maintenance for police vehicles, public works vehicles, and, and other municipal vehicles is done either in-house or it's done by a local garage. Uh, in Montgomery, they contracted to a company that specializes in servicing government fleets, savings $200,000 annually. Okay? And lastly, uh, we want to uh, uh, point out, uh, uh, not lastly, there's two last ones actually, um, that uh, municipalities can uh, create an ongoing source of savings by creating mayoral task forces. Um, we suggest two here. One is a task force um, uh, to look at uh, selective service reduction. Uh, in many municipalities, you'll find services that are just happening uh, because no one has uh, asked, well, why are we doing that over and over again? And when we don't need to, I have a municipal lot uh, in, in front of my townhouse um, that in the wintertime uh, rarely sees a car park there, but it's plowed every single time we get an inch of snow. And this is not an exceptional uh, circumstance. I'm, I'm sure Tom will have some examples of uh, excess uh, services. And, and then to uh, complement that, a mayoral task force um, for uh, uh, service um, uh, support, community service support for service reductions. We know right now, and, and it's, it, it's been in all the papers, that the, the, the cuts that are coming down in municipal aid and, and the uh, growing cost of uh, municipal government is causing uh, reductions in service, often in the police departments and public works departments. Envision a community that has these kinds of cuts. It can become a community of dirty parks and high crime. Or it can become a community where the neighborhoods embrace the, uh, the regular cleanup of the park, leaving the public works department to do the annual spring uh, upgrade. And a community where there can be an auxiliary police handling uh, much of the traffic control and, and major events uh, of policing that is uh, covered now by paid police officers. So we need not see a reduction in the quality of our life if there is uh, a, a necessary cut uh, to the uh, uh, service budgets of police or uh, public works. And uh, the last item is uh, simply an example of that. Um, in East Brunswick, significant savings were recognized um, because the um, municipality went from twice a week to once a week garbage collection. Now, they don't do that during the summer because it's warm and the garbage can heat up during the summer. So uh, they don't do that during the summer, and they have adjustments for apartments and for commercial facilities, which they handle on a fee basis. But again, through just this adjustment that is not causing any significant disruption in the quality of life in New Brunswick, there are, again, significant annual savings. Now, I would uh, point out to you that this is just the first round of cost-cutting measures that uh, will be made available uh, to uh, citizens by way of the Citizen Campaign's Jersey Call to Service. Um, they were uh, developed uh, by the uh, a Law and Policy Task Force of the Citizens' Campaign, chaired by Gary Stein, uh, uh, former Governor Tom Kane's uh, former Chief of uh, Policy, and uh, a, a group of about, uh, I'd say about 30 uh, experts in local government law and local government finance and administration. And they're continuing to work on ideas that are being brought to them uh, by officials in the state and by citizens uh, to lower the cost of government. There's one last feature of this effort, and it's called the Platform for the People. On our website, there will be a, a platform which is basically an open forum uh, for citizens who uh, learn how to uh, bring constructive proposals uh, in our distance learning programs to put their own ideas for government cost cutting up and have dialogue over them to, so that they can uh, use their own ingenuity, that brain power that I mentioned at the beginning of my remarks. And on occasion, the Law and Policy Task Force will take ones that might be applicable to multiple municipalities and generate good savings and make them into model ready for adoption ordinances. So this really is an effort to bring the citizens to the forefront of the battle against property taxes. We needn't sit by the side and, and wait for our elected officials. We need to join with them and augment their uh, effort to reduce the cost of government in New Jersey. Now, all of this, as I, I told you, came out of this Law and Policy Task Force, uh, which convened its, its first meeting uh, this past October at the Blaustein School of Policy. 
And we uh, were very fortunate to have as one of our members, uh, Tom Byrne, uh, who also uh, chairs the, um, um, and let me make sure I'm getting this right, Tom, the Local Government, uh, no, wait a minute, the uh, Tax and Fiscal Policy Commission, uh, New Jersey Tax and Fiscal Policy Commission. This is a commission created uh, by the state legislature, and um, uh, Tom is now uh, chairing this commission, and so we asked him to be the keynote uh, speaker at the Law and Policy uh, Task Force inaugural meeting. And with no further ado, then, I will uh, ask uh, you to uh, give your attention to Tom Burr. Thanks very much, Harry. Thank you all. Um, I'd like to just say a few things um, for starters. Number one, uh, New Jersey's lucky to have Harry Vizicki. Um, there's nobody who has done more uh, to involve citizens um, in government at the state and local level. Uh, and Harry has an extraordinary track record there and uh, a record of accomplishment on the pay-to-play issue that um, I hope and I'm optimistic will be matched by the record on, uh, uh, to come on uh, property taxes and control. Um, it's obviously uh, uh, the problem in uh, New Jersey government uh, today. Uh, it's particularly a problem because uh, probably two-thirds of all government spending in New Jersey is uh, at the local level. And so it's particularly important to control that. Um, Harry has outlined an agenda that really is neither liberal nor conservative. It's, it's simply common sense. It's, it's doing common sense things to uh, help control spending. And as I uh, noted in my uh, keynote remarks to, uh, uh, to this group, um, I said that basically about 70% of uh, the cost of any operation is, is labor costs. And um, uh, it's very, very hard in this state to know what is going on in a local budget. There are very few places where you can go online and get a good summary of a town's budget. Um, there are a lot of places where you can't walk into a local library and uh, get a, su uh, a summary or even a copy of a town's budget. Uh, towns are required to uh, file budgetary information with the state, but uh, it's in a document that is, is very thick um, and um, um, it, it seems designed to obfuscate. Um, and if you're a citizen that, that wants to go into the municipal clerk's office and get a copy, um, if they're charging you um, uh, a quarter a page for a copy and it's a 65-page document, well, that's not so cheap and it shouldn't be. And in this day and age, in the internet day and age, it really shouldn't be hard to uh, put um, just a very simple summary uh, of a municipal budget on a single page and, um, and make it available um, at the clerk's office on, on one page, at the town library, or, or frankly online. Um, and that's one of the things that uh, uh, the New Jersey Tax and Fiscal Policy Study Commission is going to focus on this year, hopefully design a template and, um, and make sure that that gets out there town by town, which will do a couple of things. It'll allow people to uh, understand what's going on in their town, number one. Number two, it will allow people to compare uh, expenses um, in comparable towns. For instance, uh, I remember some years ago uh, looking at two large suburban, very comparable towns in central New Jersey, and one's legal bills were twice the other's. Uh, there may be a reason for that, there may not. But the point is, if we involve citizens and, and we make this information more readily accessible, uh, it'll make it easier just to ask the right questions and if certain expenses are justified or people in a community say, this is what we want, great. But if, uh, if there are expenditures that aren't justified, it makes it easier to do something about them. And so uh, one of the things that I feel strongly should be uh, a part of this disclosure um, is information about salaries, about basic costs of, uh, of running government. And so we've started, and, and I must tell you we're in the very initial phases of this, but we've started to put together a database of, uh, of various costs. And so uh, in talking to one mayor, uh, I find out in his town that the all-in cost of a, a police captain um, for a year is about $214,000. Now, when I talk to people around the stack, talk to smart people who are pretty well informed, and I, I give them this figure, that they, they act shocked, like they don't believe it. It's all the more reason uh, to put it out there, because I don't think there's this level of awareness. In another town, a comparable town, um, uh, again, uh, for the same kind of job, a salary of $196,500. Uh, 
these salaries are higher than for a four-star general in the U.S. Army, higher than for a federal judge. Um, and again, uh, I'm not saying what a proper level ought to be. I'm saying put the information out there so uh, local people can decide. Uh, again, just a couple <coughs> of other more or less random data points that um, I think uh, if they were out there and, and properly disseminated, people would find interesting. Uh, a village manager in this state, in a town with a population of under $25,000, $189,634 salary. Um, the Comptroller General of the United States makes less than that. Um, uh, the administrator of a town with a population of under $20,000, $154,500. A uh, fire chief in a town of 45,000 people, $163,499. Uh, and you know, on and on. And so what I want to do is, is A, build this database. Um, a lot of the information is, is publicly available already, but it's not assembled in any way that is readily understandable. And so um, that will be uh, um, a primary goal of what we do in the commission and, and working with Harry to, to uh, get citizens involved in, in putting it together town by town and disseminating it uh, town by town. So I think it's important. I think that, um, um, you know, this, this over time, sunshine alone can help us control uh, local expenditures. Or, um, alternatively, citizens may say, uh, we want this, and um, uh, we feel better about our property taxes knowing exactly uh, where the money's going. I don't particularly think that'll be the result, but if, if that is, um, fine. Um, at least the information is out there, and people in the state uh, can make um, intelligent decisions about um, uh, the, the tax dollars that uh, they're being assessed. Um, another reason I think it's important is that um, there's a lot of talk about consolidation. And um, consolidation can be um, a, a very useful thing. Um, but there is a feeling out there that consolidation may be some sort of panacea uh, for the property tax problem. And when I talk to um, people who are more expert than myself, people who have come before our commission talk about this, they say maybe that say is 5% um, a year or something like that. Um, but uh, the point is, I don't think it's a panacea, and I think that we have to look much more broadly at this issue. Uh, talking about the things that Harry has outlined, uh, talking about th this notion of uh, sunshine on local budgets and, and proper dissemination of them. Because if we just keep our focus narrowly on consolidation, I don't think we're going to get uh, to where we need to be. And the final thing I'll say, um, at least right now, is that I think uh, it's easy enough to put um, basic information on one page. Um, we've obviously demonstrated the ability to put it on 64 pages or what have you, but um, I think the average uh, voter or average citizen just wants a basic snapshot of where the money in a given town is going, how much on public safety, how much on parks and recreation, how much on sewers and maybe other things that you take for granted and don't think about uh, as much. Um, how much on debt service, um, all those sorts of things. That's the kind of information that mayors tell me. I've sat with them, asked them to help design something, and they agree that this is the sort of information that can be put on one page, and it's time we do so. And I think it can make a difference for our state in each town going forward. Good. We'll be happy to take your questions. Uh, I just wanted to uh, first thank Tom uh, for coming down here today and uh, uh, sharing his expertise with us, and most importantly for his membership on the uh, Citizen Campaign's Law and Policy Task Force, a real asset to us. So uh, your questions, please. You um, talked about the you know, average municipalities, and you know, uh, what, what would you consider to be the average size, average, average municipality for, for the basis of uh, the I don't, I, I don't have a mathematical average to give you, but just to give you some uh, parameters, Montgomery is 23,000 people, and that's the municipality which uh, is going to recognize a million dollars a year in savings from dispatching services and 200,000 uh, from uh, privatizing their salon, just to give you a couple of figures. The, the communities that we talked about that could merge uh, planning boards and zoning boards are statutorily those at 15,000 or less. But larger municipalities will recognize larger savings. So you can see if they're significant at the levels of uh, 15 to 20 
or so thousand, uh, they're, they're certainly more significant as you go up the ladder. How many towns have initiative and referendum? Um, Heather, what's the number? Uh, I believe it's about 160. 160. You should know, uh, however, that initiative and referendum does not, under uh, current statute, apply to uh, uh, budget or, or fiscal matters. Um, although uh, we uh, do have uh, an item in our own agenda to uh, 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 expedite or to uh, uh, argue for uh, the uh, expansion and uh, improvement of the state's local initiative and referendum laws because at the municipal level they can be very useful. Yes, yeah, I'd like to know a little bit more about the database that um, Mr. Byrne has talked about. Mm -hmm. uh, what's going to be in the database? every municipality in the state of New Jersey? Is that the intent, that there will be one? Yeah, I, ideally, that's the intent. But um, uh, I'm not going to wait till we get every last one to uh, go public with the information we have. So um, it'll be a function, number one, of, of prioritizing maybe 50 to 100 of large municipalities, and then going from there. Um, and I'm hoping that by the time that gets out, some people, some other people will say, gee, we ought to have this in our town. And so um, because the Tax and Fiscal Policy Study Commission has no staff, um, this will be done um, largely on a volunteer basis. Um, and that can be a combination of, of student interns and uh, involved citizens in various communities. But ultimately, you would hope that even if developed by the town or municipality itself, it will be all incorporated into a single database that can be accessed by people. Yeah, I would, I would uh, ideally like to see a, uh, a database that has comparative information so that you can go town by town and see where your um, uh, salaries uh, compare to, uh, to other towns. But at the very least, um, I would like for people in any town to um, be able to readily get a, uh, a summary of uh, their local budget. Thank you. You should know that um, right now there are some efforts already providing pieces of this. Uh, I think the Gannett Papers has uh, um, salary information online. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce actually does it on a town-by-town -town basis so that you can uh, look by town-by-town. -town. But what we're uh, proposing in this uh, uh, model called Salary Sunshine Online is the top five salaries in each department the overtime in each department, and the labor contracts. Um, the SCI recently came out with a report uh, about salary and benefit abuse at the municipal level. And we think if uh, citizens are armed with this information, they can actually assist municipal officials. Often municipal officials want to address these same problems, but there isn't the political dynamic to do so. The citizens need to come to the forefront if uh, the property tax uh, uh, problem is to be truly tackled. And, and there are there are any number of mayors, by the way, who welcome this, because they feel uh, constrained um, in a number of ways, such as the binding arbitration law and so on, and um, would like um, more citizen involvement um, um, on what they uh, regard as sort of their side of the equation. I must say, I'm from Brick, and our mayor, our current newly reelected mayor, has done a lot to put a lot online, council mm -hmm. meetings are, which have been televised on a delay, are now online. So a lot of this openness is taking place. Yeah. I've been a local official on the county and on the municipal level, though, and it's very hard to do so oh, yes. when you have one or two citizens that show up all the time, and you have large unions and large constituencies of uh, salary officials that are there uh, pressing their case. If the citizens come forward in a knowledgeable way, the political dynamic will be much more favorable to bring our salaries and benefits in line uh, with other states. Absolutely. And the, the other related point is that for people who have day jobs, they commute to New York or Philadelphia or somewhere else in the state, uh, they come home and this is, this is something that maybe they can't do till 10 o'clock at night. And so that's all the more reason to uh, have it available on the internet when people can get it on their schedule rather than on somebody else's. Absolutely. Are there questions about any of the other uh, cost-cutting measures or about the uh, initiative generally? Say uh, you, you the average citizen and you, and you look at this list and you say, oh, I like one and eight, those look really good. If Montgomery and Lawmaker is saving anywhere from 800 to 950,000 um, on those. 
What do you do with it? How do you, how do you get that order to your mayor? Uh, I'm glad that you asked the question. It's very helpful. I mean, first of all, the easiest thing for citizens uh, who are interested in advancing one of these is to go online to join, jointhecampaign.com. That's our website. Uh, there they will find uh, the information about the proposal. They'll also find uh, a 20-minute uh, course that's for free, online, on demand, uh, that will teach them how to present the proposal, and we'll provide them with backup information and support if they want to go forward with any proposal of their choice. And as I said to you a moment ago, if they have new proposals that we haven't considered, they can put them on our online platform, and they can get feedback on that, and if they are worthy, they can be developed into models as well. So citizens really are given the flexibility. We're not here to lobby for a particular measure. And I, I said a moment ago, I'll repeat it, that each of these measures are not necessarily applicable to every municipality. Some will work in some municipalities, will not work in others. So it really is up to the citizens to figure out what would work in their municipality, at least get a sense of that, and then come arm themselves with uh, the knowledge that we provide them and with the legal tools. We'll provide them with an ordinance or a resolution already drafted that they can go before their mayor and council and provide so that the discussion is brought to the fore. It's not just a, a, a chat about the idea, but there's an idea that can be introduced in a model resolution or ordinance form at the next meeting if the municipality wishes to take up that cost savings. Can any of this stuff be done at the state level? We see like number two might be able to eliminate benefits for part time. Yeah, Mike, uh, some of the stuff is being done, and others we're going to uh, uh, use the same technique that we use with pay-to-play reform. We, we'll build uh, models at the local level uh, that will have companion state legislation pieces, but we're going to announce those uh, at a future date. They're, they're in the works right now by the Law and Policy Task Force. So you're right, there's double the benefit citizens affecting change at their own uh, municipal level or county level, for that matter, will be able to ratchet change at the state level as well. Okay, and if there are no further questions, as we say in uh, Middlesex County, hearing none, thank you all very much for uh, coming out today. Very much appreciate your attendance. I was going to say, just in time, there's almost a fiscal crisis in New Jersey. <laughs>